Hello everyone and now welcome to a game. This game is going to be between colorful and happy taking place here on Tide Hunters. On the top left hand side of the map we have colorful, colorful spawning as the teal night elf. Meanwhile on the bottom right we have happy spawning as the purple undead. Should be a great matchup here in this 1v1 as the game does get underway. You know, ghoul clawing away at that um, little tree right there anyways let's gonna let's go ahead and break down the the ideas of what's gonna be unfolding in this matchup ancient of war there ain't um, altar of elders we're gonna be waiting on the heroes trying to figure out what strategies players will be trying to bring forth we can see that it's it is gonna be a death knight first coming across from the undead meanwhile the tempo pays keeper of the grove coming across from the night elf now, I've seen some recent comments on my channel about, like, why do players go for that Keeper of the Grove? It just doesn't seem that strong. And, well, that's definitely not the case. Um, early on in the game, Night Elf, as you can see here, doesn't really have a lot of opportunities to deal damage. There's that Ancient of War, there's an Archer, the Ancient of War is tanking, and the Tree Ants themselves are doing a lot of that damage as well. So that's really what we're looking at, the Keeper of the Grove being able to use um, the summon the tree ants and also being able to use entangle that is the key part there most of the heroes out there when you're trying to go for an ability early on well only one of those abilities are actually effective during the early stages of the game death coil is active uh, mana burn or immolation is active you rarely go for both the keeper of the grove has that option to go you know what i'm going to be going for entangle and also go for um, that very imp oh there's a death coil steal on the on the tide warrior um, by happy uh, and not only am i going to be going for those auto attacks there there goes another uh, minion there the keeper of the grove with that plus 10 really dealing a lot more damage and what this allows the keeper of the grove to do is if he wants Wanted to he could have very easily gone to tier two already instead he built the hunter's hall a little bit earlier than i would have expected and he is still bringing pressure with just that solo keeper of the grove knowing that a quick entangle on a ghoul coupled with some tree ants and some auto attacks would really just spell certain death death knight now being forced to try and retreat back here do a little bit of a chase back and forth there's that tech to tier two that we were expecting and we can see that colorful had transitioned into some earlier huntresses um, th than i thought possible uh, this was all off of a, so a solo single archer and now that the huntress is out here on the battlefield are we perhaps going to be looking at an entangle or anything of that nature huntress wants to get in that little bit of glaive damage does get a single shot off there huntress dealing 16 to 18 damage and you can see that the Huntress, with that faster movement speed, riding that mount, able to do a, play a little bit of catch-up. Meanwhile, back across here, Skeletal Minion um, well, tapping at that Hunter's Hall. This is a little bit of a different build than you would normally expect, but I would expect the Keeper of the Grove to try and get to level um, level 3 here. All right. Here we are, here we go. Ghoul is going to try and swarm. Tree Ants are going to be in a little bit of a trouble. The Keeper of the Grove does have good auto attack damage, remember, because of those claws. And you're going to see that the Huntresses are going to prevent or try to themselves not get easily taken out. Are we going to see an Entangle? No, we are not. One Tree Ant taken down. Another Ghoul could get taken out right there. That is a lot of damage. There's a Death Coil for the save there as the Skeletal Minions are still chasing around here as the death knight now trying to back away keeper of the grove has to be careful does not want to get surrounded huntress is now trying to make their way over there is a quick entangle death knight wants to come across is he going to get the death coil in time yes he does um, down to eight hit points and then gets healed back up all right gonna get dark ritual right there though so all of that time the huntresses should really be uh, trying to get some damage onto these other ghouls to prevent all of that healing meanwhile the keeper of the grove well used a couple of entangles to try and finish off units but he was able to force a death coil and that dark rich or that um that ritual dagger charge there all right archer gonna try and retreat back keeper of the grove refreshed ready to go expansion off to the north and at that three o'clock no no expansion here at the three o'clock spot just a nerubian tower with an acolyte doing a little bit of a dance all right so Low hit point, Ghoul going to make it back. 29 supply compared to 25. I'm happy with the larger army, but remember, some of, uh, two of those Ghouls, so four of that supply is collecting lumber as we are now teching to tier 3. Happy quickly teching to tier 3 here, 
knowing that his opponent isn't going to be able to really press with a large army yet. We are going into dual Ancients of Wind, though. All right, so dual Ancients of Wind. Are we going Mass Fairy Dragons? That would be an interesting call overall. Mass Fairy Dragons, not something you see very often, but being magic immune units, they are extremely, extremely well effective against the undead who tend to rely on Death Coil and Frost Nova to initiate and finish off a battle. Keeper of the Grove looking to get to level three. Um, Alchemist sitting at level one there. He has Acid Bomb. So it looks like Acid Bomb um, for Focus Fire, removing some of that precious armor coupled with Fairy Dragons and Huntresses. Uh, we'll see what exactly comes out from these dual Ancients of Wind here. Yes, it is going to be Fairy Dragons now. Level three now on that Keeper of the Grove. Now with up to plus 13 attack and nearly dealing 50% damage bonus every auto attack there. Meanwhile, the Entangled Gold Mine off to the north has been completed. We are at tier two off of two bases compared to tier soon to be tier three off of one. Lich is now out on the battlefield. We are getting, we do have a slaughterhouse. So that slaughterhouse with, um, well, that slaughterhouse is going to be incredibly important uh, to try and crank out some of those, um, well, some of those obsidian statues. Keeper of the Grove doing a little bit of a slow walk off to the north here. Treehand's trying to do a bit of superficial damage, just feeding experience to the Death Knight and that Lich for now. Lich does have dual claws of attack plus five, does have that gloves of haste. Meanwhile, Goblin Alchemist gets to level two by himself, picks up Rune Bracers. So that is going to be an interesting um, item pickup. Who is it going to stay on is the question as the Keeper of the Grove, um, uh, well, is rather fragile, only 575 hit points. Death Coil, Frost Nova, and well, the Keeper of the Grove could be on the wrong side of things really quickly. Death Coil, Frost Nova already down that pretty much half-life. Gonna go ahead and teleport back out of the situation there. And now perhaps drink some Moonwell Juice. All right. Moonwell Juice drank. Staff of Preservation. Uh, Goblin Alchemist looking to get to level 3. Should be able to get there. Even, well, with the Keeper of the Grove nearby. Still just makes it. Uh, are we gonna see some item transfers? No, we are not. Um... Keeper of the Grove is not going to be holding on to the Rune Bracers. That will be more on the Goblin Alchemist. I guess the Goblin Alchemist, since he is that frontline hero and also, well, essentially has more hit points, the Rune Bracers give total overall more effective hit points there. That Gargantuan Sea Turtle suddenly having zero armor, taking a lot more damage, and that will get finished off easily. All right. Obsidian statues, Lich trying to clear out the enraged elemental creep camp, Orb of Corruption gift um, should be given to the Lich now, there it is, I'm giving that, well, auto attack debuff, so, so powerful. Meanwhile, the fairy dragons are up in the air, able to poke down a, quite a bit of these units. Perhaps it is a combination of the, the Acid Bomb Focus Fire, but that Acid Bomb Focus Fire does um, account for, um, well, a lot more damage than I would have expected at this stage. All right, some more tree ants are going to join in. There's an acid bomb, negative armor, so everything um, deals an additional 6% damage. Um, essentially, that acid bomb it, it gives t level 2 weapon upgrades to everything that is attacking it. If you're looking for a quick and easy way to try and understand um, how effective that acid bomb is there. There's a quick repair incoming army now ready to engage and that destroyer is gonna well scout this out i'm surprised the fairy dragons didn't try and engage against that destroyer even though the fairy dragons have weak um short range anti-air is still very effective colorful seeing that 60 over 60 supply undead trying to figure out where his opponent is both sides now running up on two bases we are at tree of ages compared to halls or black citadel though so tier three versus tier two Huntresses looking to engage. Huntresses do not have any upgrades. I do not believe... No, Hunter's Hall just finished... No, Hunter, Hunter's Hall's finished 2-0 upgrades for the Fairy Dragons. So the Fairy Dragons doing 15 to 21 damage. Plus that with the Acid Bomb. And 
and that those flying units that can stack on top of each other and then well just overwhelm a single target and actually very effective ring of protection would be very useful on that um on that alchemist as once more the expo is once again under a bit of distress lich is sitting at level two with plus 21 attack and and that orb of corruption we're going to see a little bit of poke damage coming back across here all right we can, you can see that well, round of attacks as the ghouls now looking to retreat back we could be looking at an expo here at the well eight o'clock expansion location shortly there's a couple of creep camps available still on the map who can really take them out get to level four or get to level five first getting to level five first is always the um, always a strong strong point and then it starts to make sense for once the person gets to level five to try and start engaging against your opponent and by engaging your opponent at level five when your opponent is not yet at level five um even if you tr if even if you only trade efficiently you will still come out on top in terms of experience then your opponent cannot i repeat cannot try and um, creep to make up that advantage because they themselves might already be at level five so you're closer to level six while your opponent um, is just stuck at level five and unable to easily make up that experience gap unless they try and engage you again all right on the bottom left here do we see acid bomb no no acid bomb goblin malcolm is just simply going after the targets here the flock of fairy dragons um just keeping happy at bay happy's gonna try and put pressure there once more you see one a mana ceiling i don't know if you have a you know we do have a scroll of town portal and it looks like that 12 o'clock location is going to be pressured once again colorful isn't fully saturating this expansion either so a little bit of an odd conundrum here as well we look to dive in all right here we are here we go keeper of the grove fairy dragons expos and uh, acolytes could get cleaned up quickly are the fairy dragons gonna perhaps even try and go into that other form as they quickly teleport out exchanging of scrolls of town portal a wisp or two were lost on or a wisp was lost on one side while an acolyte was lost on the other i believe a couple of huntresses or ghouls were lost there difficult to tell colorful sitting at 70 supply though so um yeah, yeah there's a, how many huntresses are there three huntresses but you really mass fairy dragons against air all right these crypt fiends now um, with one one upgrades should be getting web if if they don't already have it units trying to retreat back now keeper the grove gonna make their way over and well in comes the spirit tower and in comes that engagement all right a little bit of damage here that spirit tower will easily easily stay alive though fortified armor coupled with a handful of acolytes nearby and that is more than enough but once more while flocking in the fairy dragons finding ways to put in a pressure once again as the fairy dragons phase shift a little bit of damage once more all right this is all to try and get this eight o'clock expo set up and perhaps build up a little bit of a bank and be able to replenish those units more quickly on the battlefield all right timing is always key and important here you can see this color uh, this um colorful gold mine is um, taking quite a bit of pressure and um, well a quick entangle on a crypt fiend gonna lose a crypt fiend in transit but that entangled gold mine is lost of uh, a couple of wisps were lost here and that's gonna get re-entangled an um, 800 damage of well 800 um, fortified damage being done there but it doesn't cost any gold it is just really gold lost both sides are now fighting exchanging blows crypt fiends are getting webbed down there's mana flare now so on those well webbed down fairy dragons he just quickly goes into mana flare mode gets additional armor and then from uh, and then forces the fairy dragons or the obsidian statues to try and back away both sides 68 versus 65 both sides still fighting their way through lich trying to get in some quick attacks there more scrolls of healing being used up as well as the cryptings are trying to stay alive keeper the grove unable to make its way back across we see some more fairy dragons um, there well yeah that additional plus armor helping but it is now daybreak so no additional um, well natural regeneration there's a potion of healing or a 
I believe that was a, a health stone. There goes another Crypt Fiend, 65 compared to 62. Both sides suffering big losses again and again as we're going to see the Obsidian Statue perhaps get taken down. No, Obsidian Statue able to escape away at 12 hit points as the Chemical Raging Goblin now going after all of these units here. 65 supply compared to 68. Both sides still putting in pressure. What is going down across all of these units as the Obsidian Statue here could end up getting poked, a car, poked apart. No, down to 29 hit points. Fairy Dragon's trying to get it down to 20 hit points. And, well, the Unholy Aura seems seemingly doing enough to try to keep everything together. There's still that low hit point Obsidian Statue in the back. There goes a Crypt Fiend as well. Both sides are fighting as the Keeper <coughs> of the Grove forced to use the Scroll of Town Portal. There goes a Frost Nova. There goes a Huntress down. A couple more webs, but a Tactical Retreat back out as the Obsidian Statue with mana being repaired by Acolytes. All right. Colorful, gonna go ahead and try and mine that location there. I mean, and Walt still hang on to this top location that's still getting pressured. Level five, level three, compared to level four, level four. This is a perfect opportunity if uh, Colorful can do it to try to get to level five on both heroes, as I mentioned. But, well, not very many creep camps available on the map. Um, a handful, no, yeah, like some of the ones that are marked as still orange are are just a former, former shadow of themselves as they were taken out. Happy sitting at 53 supply now. Our, we, we are now looking at saturation on this gold mine once more. Death Knight now trying to make its way, going to be putting in pressure. Crypton getting in a couple of attacks and, well... Are we going to perhaps dive in on those obsidian statues again? Ancient of War now making its way over. Here we are. There you go. There's a couple of entangled units. Obsidian statue quickly poked down. And um, one obsidian statue already down there as both sides are still continuing to fight and put in pressure. Mass fairy dragons causing problems. Crypt Fiend trying to stay alive. You can see a lot of focus right there, but that 400 burst hit point heal seemingly doing quite a bit as there's another death coil across. Ancient of War taking quite a bit of damage. Now, Keeper of the Grove still trying to do a little bit of a dance back and forth here, trying to finish off some of those other units. Again, we can see that there is a destroyer out here as well as the Ancient of War trying to make its way back over. Are we going to see enough damage onto the Lich? No, we are not. Tactical retreat back out here, trying to poke more damage onto that destroyer, but it's able to head back. Happy sitting at 47 supply compar compared to Colorful's 64. And this is one of those classic situations where Happy may not recognize that his opponent has that extra base. Another odd thing that Colorful has been doing is that he hasn't really been fully saturating this gold mine. We've seen it a couple times with three or four wisps in there. And with it he's making it a point of reference that hey you need to go in after me and try and stop this but perhaps by mining a little bit less gold than optimal he's making it um, difficult for his opponent to well even conclude that there is another base somewhere else all right more damage still racking up we're gonna see well a webbed down crypt fiend or a, a webbed down a fairy dragon i believe there was scroll of healing there used once more the destroyers are still popping up into the air trying to recover some lost hit points as the well death knight now having that 600 hit point heal just doing an absolute great job keeping all of these crypt fiends alive and well fairy dragons remember piercing damage going up against crypt fiends who are now sticking their head in the sand if they take a little bit too much damage all right there goes one crypt fiend down both, both sides still fighting their way through 68 supply compared to 58 we're going to see the destroyer perhaps get taken down no down to 63 hit points he's able to back away that destroyer not so lucky as we're looking at a quick entangle on to that uh, burrowed crypt fiend there all right i burrowed crypt fiend. there was a dust of appearance i thought but was it used by another who is it you know that was the reveal um, by the the alchemist off of the crystal ball perhaps um i know that he had one earlier Frost Armor continuing to, well, provide a bit of cover. Lich, Potion of Invulnerability at 22 hit points. Crypting gets taken down. Obsidian Statue going to fall as well. And this Fairy Dragon push is seemingly doing a lot of damage as another uh, Destroyer bites the dust. However, wow, 
beautiful save to get that Goblin Alchemist out of danger. And now the Death Knight now down to 75 hit points. Is he going to be able to escape? He gets entangled again. He tries to get negated and, well, negate that, but that doesn't work either. Lich now gets up to level 5, and it is now a Keeper of the Grove fighting alongside an army of dragons here. That Obsidian Statue is going to go down. Keeper of the Grove doesn't get to level 6, though. I believe it was too far away from all of the action and will share the experience with that Goblin Alchemist. All right, Goblin Alchemist has a decent amount of mana. Didn't go, remember, did not go for healing spray. Um, all of those fairy dragons, how are they going to heal up now? The Moonwells did not get the improved nature wellspring upgrade. And without that wellspring upgrade, well, things can go sideways quickly. Oh, Chemical Raging Goblin Alchemist dove in a little bit too far. He's going to get Staff of Preservation. No, he is not. Instead, feeds level 6 to the Death Knight. All right. What looked like smooth sailing, or at least a favorable position for Colorful, has suddenly flipped. Having to retrain up that Goblin Alchemist is huge. Now we can see that, the, oh, quickly, Staff of Preservation sends him back a beautiful trap there, trying to see if the Keeper of the Grove would venture forth and perhaps try and resurrect that Goblin Alchemist, only to see that the, all of those burrowed Crypt Queens were in fact in that position. All right, Keeper of the Grove, he's going to try and, well, he's going to go in a quick entangle, quick scroll of Town Portal, tactical retreat back out, webbing down, trying to f save all of those units, and it is a tactical retreat right there. Colorful is still sitting on, or was sitting on a thousand gold. Happy now, the one sitting on a large amount of gold, as he is purposely staying in no upkeep. Level six, level five versus levels five, level five. Hero level advantage now lost. Keeper of the Grove not buying a scroll of healing as I would have expected. Staff of Preservation sending back another unit. Where are all of these units going? Uh, being able to take out or get that Keeper of the Grove, the level six would be just absolutely huge. The Keeper of the Grove was 24 experience shy and now going to really try and dive in after these units here. All right, one Crypt Fiend going to get taken out. That's not going to be, be an... Oh, it is enough. I thought it wouldn't be enough, um, especially with the Goblin Alchemist here as we're now making its way over. All right, Keeper of the Grove going to make its way over here. Going to try and do a little bit of poking. There's a Death Coil um, to try and take on some of those or try and save that Crypt Fiend. There's your Tranquility. So tranquility amongst the battle. And, well, the Keeper of the Grove was standing still, and he got blasted down. All right. Horrible, horrible positioning right there. Meanwhile, uh, well, the Crypt Fiends um, are easily or dealing with these Fairy Dragons alongside support from the Death Knight and uh, these Obsidian Statues. That Well, Destroyer trying to keep its distance, though, just a bit. What is unfolding here as the... Well, the Keeper of the Grove makes his way back over and is now going to do a tactical retreat back out. 64 supply compared to 58. Going to go ahead, heal back up. Need a tranquility, need a little bit more mana. Perhaps drop the Mantle of Intelligence, pick it back up. Use a Clarity Potion, do something, and then well, try and heal. All right, it's going to be, well, as I've said before in my cast, Tranquility, one of those ultimate abilities that are both useful in and out of combat to try and, well, stay topped off on all of your units. Rune Bracers really should be, or should have been transferred over. Um, I don't, if the Rune Bracers were on that Keeper of the Grove, I think that would have been a very different game. But then again, it does make a lot of sense that the Alchemist had it for lo so long as well. It is now two bases versus two bases, soon to be one, as Happy scouts out and sees, what, you're only this far and you have a 5,000 gold advantage? And um, we're looking at the, well, the fairy dragon is trying to poke apart now the, while the destroyer is transforming, apparently was not taking any real damage at all as the fairy dragon is going after all of these units. Chemical Raging Goblin Alchemist, there's a, well, that was a deny there. Meanwhile, Staff of Preservation saves the Chemical Raging Goblin Alchemist temporarily as he's, well, out of the fight, but at the same time could have some problems. He's going to try to come back in. No, Scroll of Town Portal coming back the other side. Perhaps a couple of ghouls, perhaps another couple of kills. No, Scroll of Town Portal for that tactical retreat as 
the tree of life now going to get cleaned up 70 supply compared to 55 gold mines here 2000 2700 versus 36 um, as that gold mine is taken out all right tranquility keeper of the grove well the one fairy dragon didn't get the message to be uh, there on a time as the tree of ages now making the trek down to that southern position level seven level six versus level six level five losing that goblin alchemist was the big big setback that gave happy momentum to perhaps be able to come back in this game that is a lot of fairy dragons yes yes are your fairy dragons you can you've seen them before no they i i don't use reforged graphics how dare you <laughs> okay coming back through uh poking she's like i want to see the new new design i'm like i oh, dude i'm not using reforged graphics coming back around crypt fiends while battling it up here keeper of the grove could be in a lot of trouble scroll of town portal down to 15 hit points and now continuing to poke around as well once more um as the heroes level up this is just something that um, inevitably happens with undead that 300 hit point nuke from the death knight and th what 350 uh, hit point nuke from the lich um on a six second or eight second cooldown usually translates into dead heroes especially into the uh, intelligence based heroes um also adding the fact that the keeper of the grove and the goblin alchemist are the only two valid targets for those abilities um that really changes things up perhaps getting anti-magic potion on the heroes um, would absorb quite a bit of damage and and change the outcome of the game there as the tree of eternity or tree of ages excuse me now looking to mine in the bottom left happy already mining here in the southern position as well fairy dragons two two upgrades um tranquility still on cooldown what is going to go down here as we're looking at a little bit of a fight all right in alchemist in inbound there's death coil frost nova onto the keeper of the grove no involved hit potion on the keeper of the grove he's gonna have a very very bad day trying to finish off or save some of these units scroll of town portal quickly getting done there's a death coil on to a crypt fiend. one crypt fiend does get taken out but trading scrolls of town portal for um scrolls of town portal for um crypt fiends even though you are gaining experience isn't the the most effective ways to try and win this out however i say that forgetting that the goblin alchemist just needs to get to level six once level six goblin alchemist is in play destroyers are no longer very viable options or viable targets any longer that is colorful strategy he just wants to kill one thing um uh, one thing and will get to level six once level six happens potions of mana um potions of mana will be used and used consistently as the as we're still looking at a bit of a fight here all right keeper of the grove he's going to try to use tranquility again we're trying to focus down some of these targets keeper of the grove could be in trouble down he goes level six level six now on the go goblin alchemist goblin alchemist is going to be using transmute though so and that is on a 42 second cooldown we are retreating back units are trying to fall away we're another crypt being going to get taken down and the units are going to fall back again colorful does have a decent amount of gold but with transmute and the fact that the goblin alchemist still has 220 gold um, um already he should be fine colorful gonna make its way over perhaps is he gonna sell some items the ring of superiority no picks up a scroll of town portal and now perhaps gonna try and dive in and pick another fight somewhere else is the keeper of the grove getting resurrected no he is not um well it is up to colorful to always put himself in a situation where he is going to be able to um well going to be able to use transmute effectively there goes one acolyte there goes another acolyte acolytes are getting cleaned up pretty quickly tree of ages gonna get taken down quick well a little bit more slowly just because um well, fortified armor a lot of the acolytes got taken out there are two left there this haunted gold mine is cleaned up followed by this one here all right are we gonna see a transmute yep thank you very much there's the transmute and that was an effective trade right there transmuting and then using that scroll of town portal to head back home all right goblin alchemist drink some mana 
and then move, make your way back out. Make sure you always have enough for that transmutation. Um, the cooldown is not being accurately represented. We know that that is the case, but remember that it is a 45 second cooldown. So it is extremely, extremely fast. Lich now making its way back over. Death Knight coming back in, trying to take down. Here's Death and Decay to speed up the destruction of this building. Here we are, here we go. There's some phase shifting there. Crypt Fiends are trying to retreat all the way to the far back. There goes the, uh, well, there goes the Altar of uh, Elders. Altar of Elders now down. Chemical Raging Goblin Alchemist. There was another transmute um, just trying to finish off these units. Now another Death Coil coming back across here. Chemical Raging Alchemist down to 11, or down to 10 mana. Doesn't have a very much mana. Crypt Fiends are trying to get cleaned up here. The Alchemist wants mana and lots of it as it's going to be another 30 seconds. All right. Are we going to see some more burrowed Crypt Fiends? There's a reveal there. There goes another Crypt Fiend. Crypt Fiend, no, gets Death Coiled instead. That Crypt Fiend, well, on cooldown. There goes one Crypt Fiend again. There is now up to level 8. What is going on here? We see Death Pact as well. We're looking at a couple of units just constantly getting felled and cleaned up. The Chemical Raging Goblin Alchemist, unsure of what target to go after, finishes off one here. And now it does another reveal. And perhaps going to try and take down some more. Fairy Dragons are causing some phase shifting. Where is that Chemical Raging Goblin Alchemist looking to finish off this Burrowed Crypt Fiend. Burrowed Crypt Fiend is, well, finally going to get taken out as the Chemical Raging Alchemist didn't have enough mana. All right, where is he retreating? Back to 27 supply compared to 55. The Chemical Raging Alchemist, there's that Keeper of the Grove. Are they going to be able to, well, do anything here? Keeper of the Grove, Staff of Preservation, what is going on? Are they going to, what is, what happened there? Okay, not quite sure what happened there. Potion of Mana was given to the Chemical Raging Goblin Alchemist. He's now retreating back. No more mining happening at the top. S um, mining happening back at the southern position. It's one base versus zero. And the Goblin Alchemist going to run back home, drink some mana, and then perhaps try and, um, try and do something with what he has. There is still six Fairy Dragons out in play. So... And there is still a rather large undead army. All right. I, I don't know. It almost feels like the Goblin Alchemist should have um, a potion of invisibility dive in somewhere, transmute. Oh, he's going to try and back away. Is he going to transmute something? Is he going to transmute something? He's trying to transmute. There's a transmute. Now there's a run. And that is instead going to be it. Tried to get a little bit clever with that Goblin Alchemist. But even with the Goblin Alchemist, unable to get very far death and decay animate dead tranquility and transmute all unlocked in this 30 minute 2v2 matchup let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments below